How do magnets work? And how does elemental mastery work? Two age old questions. Today, I'll be answering one of those questions along with explaining everything there is to know about the current six elements in Genshin Impact. Elemental reactions, elemental resonance, which elements are the best, what they do, how they work. Let's get into it. Genshin's combat system is surprisingly deep and complex. Yeah, you can just roll your head on the keyboard and have some fun, but if you want, you can nerd up and start optimizing your gameplay to make your favorite character the best they can possibly be, or to just start clapping the abyss 36 stars every month. Wherever you lie on that spectrum, there is gonna be something you are gonna learn in this video. So let's start with elemental auras. When you hit an enemy with a pyro, cryo, electro, or hydro attack, they will have an aura of that element element for a set amount of time. You can see what element an enemy is currently affected by by looking above their head. The only two elements that don't cause a aura are animo and geo, but we will get to them a bit later. We call this applying an element. Mona applies the hydro aura of wet when she attacks or auto attacks, right? But plain and simply, if you hit an affected enemy with another elemental type, a reaction is going going to occur. And now if I switch to Deluc and use my skill, the pyro attack hitting the hydro aura will cause a vaporize reaction. You can clearly see that Mona was the applicator of an element, while Deluc was the one who triggered the elemental reaction. You can do this backwards as well. Use Deluc's skill to apply Pyro, switch to Mona, and now Mona is the trigger applying the Hydro to the Cryo. The reaction will be vaporized no matter if it's Pyro Hydro or Hydro Pyro. You can see the order in which the reaction occurred above the enemy's head. The element on the left is the one that triggered the reaction while the element on the right is the one that was applied first. So guys, keep that in mind. We just learned about applying an element and then someone else triggering the reaction, the applicator and the trigger. Now, before the um actuallyers come out in the comments, you may think, well, why doesn't my Barbara cause vaporize every single time I attack a pyro slime or something else affected by pyro? This is an advanced topic that I'm gonna be covering later in the video, but just know that some attacks, usually the quicker or weaker elemental attacks have an internal cooldown on how often they can cause a reaction. But once again, later in the video. We just talked about the reaction of Vaporize, Pyro and Hydro. There are tons of different reactions in Genshin Impact that do different things, different effects. Some are better than others. By the end of this video, guys, you are going to know all of them and which are the best and what they do. So let's go over everything for Pyro. Pyro is known as one of the best elements in Genshin Impact for one clear reason. It does big damage. Its power has even even coined the joke pyro impact in the community all right so pyro is a good element to start with since all of its reactions are purely just damaged based so when pyro meets hydro vaporize occurs we just went over that right which makes your attack that triggered the reaction do either 1.5 times increased damage or two times damage melt is the exact same as vaporize a damage increase on the triggering attack of either 1.5 times damage or two times damage that is the reaction of cryo ice and pyro now is a perfect time to mention the two genshin community coined terms for reactions as you can see melt and vaporize do nothing but amplify the damage of a hydro cryo or pyro attack it is a single instance of damage but amplified these reactions are known as amp reactions, you know, short for amplify or amplification, you know. The next pyro reaction is known as a transformative reaction, where the original damage of the trigger attack will remain unaffected, but the reaction will transform into an effect that will occur. This reaction is when electro meets pyro. It's called overloaded. So we can see the two instances of damage here. The effect that overloaded causes is an explosion of damage damage around where the attack happened. Now, while overload does a great amount of damage, it's usually regarded as quite a poor or bad reaction because it blasts lighter opponents like off. It blasts them away from you and you have to like use your stamina to sprint over to them and chase them down. So it's actually pretty inconvenient in combat, right? So Pyro has two amp reactions of melt and vaporize, as well as two transformative reactions, overloaded and swirl. Wait, eeks, swirl? 
Come on, bro. Where'd that come from? Swirl is the reaction that comes from Animo, the wind element. Animo can cause a swirl reaction with pyro, hydro, cryo, and electro. But we're going to go over Animo last since it's probably the most complicated. I just want to make sure I don't leave any information out while staying, you know, easy to understand and interesting. All right, guys. So we're pretty early in the guide and we already know about elemental auras, applying and triggering reactions amp reactions where they just increase the single instance of damage like melt or vape and transformative reactions where a separate damage instance occurs sometimes with a bonus effect and all the reactions for pyro let's go man now that we've got that out of the way i think the basics are going to be a cakewalk Next, let's do Hydro. With Hydro, we already know about Vaporize, but when Hydro meets Electro, it causes Electro Charge. Electro Charge, instead of being one instance of reaction damage, it ticks over time with multiple hits of small damage until the enemy is pretty much no longer affected by Hydro anymore. So in a big fight of Hydro and Electro flying around everywhere, it's gonna keep them Electro Charge for a long time, which is really cool. Electro Charge will stagger and interrupt smaller enemies with each tick as well you've probably felt the wrath of this you know reaction being stun locked in a river once or twice by now and um, another cool thing about electro charge is it will even jump to enemies nearby that are affected by hydro that are close enough the electro will like jump over them so it's a really cool reaction that's easy to keep up on the enemy with heavy electro and hydro application and stuff like that and the damage does add up over time so yai miko actually has a specific uh reaction where she gets 97 percent of people that aren't subscribed to the channel to actually click the subscribe button right now it's pretty sick thank you yai mika next is frozen cryo and hydro quite simply the enemy becomes frozen no bonus damage occurs but the enemy will be unable to move as long as they're frozen right while frozen if an enemy is hit with a heavy attack so a claymore a sword plunge attack or even geo damage uh the ice will be shattered which is a reaction in and of itself no one really talks about this damage since it's not worth the setup of apply hydro apply cryo shatter and then repeat but i mean it's good to know that it exists right if you want someone to stay frozen don't shatter the ice on accident okay freeze is a popular comp since well if the enemy can't attack they're probably pretty easy to defeat wouldn't you say so we've got melt an amp reaction we've got frozen a transformative reaction that doesn't do bonus damage but freezes the enemy in place and then finally we've got super conduct the combination of electro and cryo so the damage that the superconduct reaction does is extremely weak seriously it's like pitiful but it does have an extremely unique effect okay so it lowers the target's physical damage resistance by 40 percent for 12 seconds so this is why you'll commonly see electro and cryo combos on teams with people like razor and eula characters that deal physical damage superconduct also has this little like chain reaction effect if targets are close to each other and all get affected by the super conduct but the damage is so bad that it really doesn't matter one quick thing about frozen you can't freeze the huge bosses like devon and stuff i mean they'd be kind of broken right next up is geo i i love geo until now guys because it works differently from the above but it's still super simple and easy to understand geo only has a reaction effect when coming into contact with an element second you can think geo can only be the trigger and when it does it creates a transformative reaction called crystallize when geo meets a target affected by an element it will react with that element dropping a little crystal on the ground it'll be the same color as the element that was absorbed right and it grants you a shield now even though my shield is purple since it's fused with electro it blocks all sorts of damage okay not just electro but it negates electro damage way more than usual it's more effective against electro damage so and it works the same way for whatever element it comes into contact with some geo enemies like geo vishaps and slimes will drop geo crystals which obviously help you out when you pick them up right but you can't produce this yourself with like double geo skills or something like that geo and animo have no reactions together easy so geo reactions on paper aren't very exciting or game breaking but geo is far from being a bad element just wait until we talk about elemental resonance finally we've got animo the wind element and if you were listening before it does not place an aura on the opponent hence why geo and animo don't work with one another they both have to be the trigger and they both don't put an aura on the opponent Swirl is a transformative reaction that occurs when an animo skill comes into contact with an enemy affected by 
an element prior. Just like Geo and myself, Animo must come second. The original Animo damage attack remains seen right here while the transformative swirl reaction occurs in the form of whatever element it was mixed with. If I were to use an Animo spell on an enemy with no aura, no swirl would be present, only the skill's original damage. Another property of swirl is that it sort of spreads around all elemental auras of enemies near each other, causing them to quite literally react with each other. It's pretty much a chain reaction of, well, reactions, lol. So we've got an enemy affected by Pyro, one with Cryo, and one with Electro. Now, watch this. We see the original skill damage and the swirl, along with a myriad of different reactions, melt, and overloaded. I know swirl is confusing, but long story short, it picks up the first element it comes into contact with to swirl and can spread elemental auras around to nearby opponents. And that process of spreading elements can cause reactions itself. Now that we know all the elements and their reactions, you guys are finally ready for elemental mastery. Simply put, elemental mastery is a damage multiplier on your reactions. So the higher your EM is, the more damage your melt overload and swirl is going to be but this is the most important and finicky thing about elemental mastery only the elemental mastery of the trigger character matters if shang ling applies pyro and then gone Yu hits the target with her frost flag arrow gone Yu's elemental mastery will increase the damage not zhang ling's this is how damage is calculated for both transformative and amp reactions this is also why em is so valuable and important on animo characters since they can only be the trigger every single swirl reaction they cause will always take their em into account to boost the damage dealt since crystallize doesn't do damage elemental mastery only helps geo characters shield be a little bit bigger it is not something worth thinking about at all while this is a bit more advanced i think it is best to talk about it right here right now transformative reactions so overloaded shattered electrocharged superconduct and swirl these types of reactions cannot critical hit and they do not scale with your character's attack stat now of course there is the original hit of the skill and the reaction damage of the reaction the original hit can crit and scales with your attack but the reaction damage does not it scales only with your elemental mastery and your character's level yes oddly enough the level of your character affects the strength of their transformative reactions so a level 22 sucrose with talent level 4 burst is going to do less damage than a level 50 sucrose with a talent four burst the base attack she gets upon leveling up from 22 to 55 is not taken into account for the swirl just the level itself and her elemental mastery so for your favorite animo characters like sucrose venti and kazuha getting them to 90 is not a bad idea at all but for amplifying reactions like melt and vaporize they amplify the original attack right so that attack will scale off of the original attack damage their attack damage percent bonuses that you have crit rate and crit damage are all taken into account and their elemental mastery on top of that will increase the damage too as long as they are the trigger not the applicator finally for the basics let's talk about elemental resonance if you have two of the same elemental type of characters in your party you receive a bonus called elemental resonance so for my example my team right here of Hu Tao, Bennett, Xing Chu, and Zhong Li, I have two Pyro characters, one Hydro, one Geo. So my entire party is going to receive the Pyro Resonance Boost, which is affected by Cryo for 40% less time, whoopee, but the big one is a 25% attack increase. Yet another reason why Pyro is so strong, its Elemental Resonance Boost increases your damage even further. Two Hydro characters makes you affected by Pyro for 40% less time and increases your healing by 30%. Yeah, not very exciting or good, unfortunately. Two Electro characters grants affected by Hydro for 40% less and whenever you trigger Superconduct, Electro Charge, or Overloaded, it will generate an Electro Energy particle. So also not very strong besides a very small energy increase for your team. Double Cryo grants Electro down by 40% along with increasing your crit rate by 15% against characters frozen or affected by cryo. It's a really strong resonance that really shines on freeze comps since they're always gonna be frozen or affected by cryo. 
But while if you're melting, for example, they won't have cryo on them very often. It will constantly be melted off. So you don't really get to take advantage of this bonus all the time. Double Animo is a cool one that decreases stamina consumption by 15%. It increases your movement speed by 10% and it shortens your skill cooldowns by 5%. It's a pretty nifty resonance for exploring the overworld and it helps in battle too with lots of things behind the scenes. Double Geo has an amazing elemental resonance. It increases your shield strength by 15% and grants this bonus to characters when they are affected by a shield only. Their damage dealt is increased by 15% and dealing damage to enemies will decrease their geo resistance by 20% for 15 seconds. So as long as you've got a shield on, you get a 15% damage multiplier, whether it's physical, pyro, you name it. And finally, if you have four different elements, you get physical and elemental resistance increased by 15%. Maybe for new players, this is nice, but our goal is to just never get hit in the first place. So it ends up not being a very competitive resonance. So those right there are all the basics of the elements, elemental reactions, elemental mastery, and resonance. But don't leave just yet. I wanna go over a few more advanced topics that are gonna help you have a deeper understanding of the game. And they may even answer some of those burning questions you might still have in your head right now about reactions. Remember when I said earlier that vaporize won't occur every single time Barbara attacks a pyro slime? Well, that's because of a very prevalent game mechanic deemed an attacks internal cooldown or ICD for short. Each and every skill, converted auto attack, etc., has their own ICD rules. There's obviously hundreds of different attacks in the game to remember, which would not only be boring for me to tell you all about them, but it would also be impractical. Luckily, there is a very easy rule of thumb for ICDs. An attack's ICD is refreshed after three consecutive attacks or every two and a half seconds. So back to Barbara. Her auto attacks ICD will refresh and cause another vaporize reaction either after 2.5 seconds since the first reaction or after three consecutive attacks. As you can see here on her first hit, a vaporize occurs. And on the fourth hit, another vaporize will occur. Or if I go slower, we can get an auto attack that isn't past the third consecutive hit to vaporize just by waiting until that 2.5 second window is passed. This goes for pretty much every normal attack string in the game, whether it's a catalyst user of pure hydro like Barbara or Mona, or who Tao's skill, which converts her typically normal physical damage bonus autos into pyro. After she turns on the pyro conversion, the three hits 2.5 ICD rule applies. This is unfortunately why some characters are a bit clunky with reactions like Yoimiya. She attacks extremely fast and wants her first, fourth, and seventh attacks in her attack string to proc vaporize. But if you were to be interrupted in your attack string or something else goes wrong, like you're not applying enough hydro, you may end up vaporizing the worst attacks in her string. Lots of attacks in the game do not have an ICD though, and will proc a reaction every single time. Deluke is an example of this. Every time he uses the charge of his elemental skill, it will vaporize every time. Also, Hu Tao's charge attack will vape every single time. We've talked about Vape and Melt as the game's premier high damage dealing reactions, but earlier I mentioned that Vape and Melt will either do 1.5 times damage or two times damage, right? So here it is. If Pyro triggers Vaporize, it will do 1.5 times damage. While if Hydro triggers Vaporize, it will do two times damage. The same goes for Melt, but reversed. If Pyro triggers the Melt, it does two times damage. And if Cryo triggers it, it does 1.5 times damage. So you're probably thinking, well, that sucks. If I don't Hydro Vape or Pyro Melt, I'm just losing damage. Well, depending on the reaction order and how strong the trigger attack is, sometimes the elemental aura will not be consumed after a reaction action and will stay on the target. That is how it works for the 1.5 times melt and vape occurrences. This is the rule of thumb. You can usually cause two vapes when pyro triggers it for 1.5 times. The hydro will last until the second vape. While hydro proccing vape for two times damage will usually remove the pyro completely, ending the potential for reactions until you apply an element again. The same goes for melt. I'll show you this rule in action with Bennett and Rosaria. If I use my Bennett skill and then Rosaria, the pyro is still left on the enemy for a bit after the skill is used, dealing 1.5 times damage melt. But doing the opposite, Rosaria's skill to apply cryo and then Bennett vaping it off, the cryo is gone, but it did two times damage. These terms in the community are deemed reverse melt or reverse vape when done in the 1.5 times damage, but hits two times way. 
You may be thinking that with tons of different elements flying around, how do I have control over who is triggering the reaction? Therefore, whose elemental mastery needs to be increased? Aside from Animo, where it's always a good idea to have EM because they're always the trigger, the true answer is that it totally depends on a huge multitude of things, unfortunately. It depends on what characters you're using, what their attacks do, how long they last, how many times it applies an element, how much of an element does it apply, blah, blah, blah. it gets really complicated really fast. But if you want the best out of your favorite character or your favorite team comp, just researching and testing those specific characters and learning the correct combos will prove to be an insane increase to your damage. I'll use one of my good friend Mike's favorite comps. He's the head genius in the Eeks Discord, by the way, if you're not there yet. The team revolves around Rosaria and Shangling. Long story short, with how much Pyro, Pyronado applies, and with how Rosaria's burst ticks operate, Rosaria will always be the one proccing the reverse melt. Even with Rosaria using her skill for more damage, it does not apply enough cryo to mess up the rotation. So we know that building elemental mastery on Rosaria will be the huge boost to our damage. This is just one practical example. You can choose to not think too hard about these things, kind of like I do sometimes when I'm just messing around, but I do want to direct you guys to some amazing resources if you do want to do more research into the game's engine. Those are going to be down in the description below. I'm going to link you guys to an elaborated discussion on ICDs and the elemental gauge theory. Pretty much it's a dissection of how long an element will last from a certain attack and how much of an element that move will apply to an enemy. Like I just summarized, Zhongling's Pyronado applies a lot of pyro. That'll go more into that. So you've probably noticed that some animo attacks in the game get infused with an element upon making contact with one. These are attacks that last for an extended period of time, such as Kazuha's burst or Sucrose's burst, right? After they pick up and fuse with one element, it will stay infused with that element until the attack is over. So it won't constantly change what element it's infused with, it's permanently with that one element until it's over. You can use this fact to cause more of a certain elemental reaction that you want. If you want Kazuha to cause vaporizes, right, then you need to get his burst to infuse with Pyro and then start attacking with Kokomi, for example. But I want to zoom in on some details found from infusion attacks. With multiple enemies, you are going to notice a lot of damage numbers. Let's check out this clip of Sucrose's burst infused with Pyro. You will see the original skill damage doing 1,088 damage in green. The infused damage in red, since it is now Pyro, for 300 and 59. Now Pyro then swirls upon itself for 307 on the Fatui on the right, hitting itself for 307, and then spreading it to the nearby other Fatui for the same number. Then the same swirl interaction I just explained is happening on the other Fatui, causing each Fatui to be hit by the skills damage, the infused skill damage, the swirl of their own pyro and the spread swirl from the Fatui standing next to them. This can only happen when swirl is triggered in close quarters AOE, and it can only have two instances of damage. So if there were 10 Fatui in this circle, then it's not like we would be seeing 10 different numbers pop up. They'd each only be hit by the four numbers that we just explained, not 10 or whatever. But it's still pretty insane, huh? Always remember to look above the enemy's head too. You can see the animo to the left of the pyro meaning the Animo is triggering a reaction with Pyro. The Pyro was applied by Bennett and then we swirled it. Hydro has some really weird interactions with Swirl too that honestly I don't feel super qualified to talk about, but pretty much the spreading Swirl of Hydro does no damage. So you'll notice a lot less damage in this exact instance if we were to use Hydro instead of Pyro. And also Hydro lasts on characters while the enemy is electro charged. It doesn't get zapped off by the electro reaction happening, right? So characters can sometimes be affected by two elements at the same time electro and hydro and then you can even get like double swirls off of this double affected reaction unit it's, it's really weird but just always look above the enemy's head getting used to that in your combat flow is going to help you get the reactions you want and start pro gaming so gamers, that was my attempt at breaking down the elements in a fun and simple way. This video was an absolute hell to write and proof check and proofread and test. So if you could do your boy a favor, overload that like button and shatter that subscribe button.
I, that was cringe, but bars. <laughs> but for real, if you guys could sub for some more Genshin goodness, I'd appreciate it. And come check out my stream, guys. I promise you that my stream is not some silent, cringe, lame stream. I've been streaming full time for two years. I always try to make it super fun for everybody with lots of laughs. And we've got a great community over there. So guys, check those things out. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.